So what were the wiretaps and the burglaries of the Watergate building all about? What were Nixon's burglars, E. Howard Hunt, G. Gordon Liddy, etc., looking for? E. Howard Hunt knew why. It was to determine if I, David R. Sanis, had turned over a copy of my type of my tape recordings of Assistant Special Agent in Charge of the Seattle Office of the FBI, Burt Carter, ordering me to carry out a mass casualty bombing of the Lake Washington Floating Bridge at Evergreen Point in Seattle on October 12, 1970. Why was Nixon, why was his team concerned? Because Nixon knew that if I had given a copy of my tape recording of the FBI ASAC, Burt Carter, telling me to carry out a mass murder terrorist attack in Seattle, Washington, he, Nixon, would lose his re-election attempt in November 1972. Nixon and his former Attorney General John N. Mitchell therefore gave the order to wiretap and burglarize the offices of the Watergate building of Democrat National Committee Chairman. That's the background. On June 20th, 1972, President Richard Milhouse Nixon took a telephone call from his chief of staff, H.R. Haldeman. The subject was my testimony on that day to the federal grand jury meeting in Seattle about my crimes committed on behalf of the FBI as an undercover agent of the FBI. And Nixon's problem They were under the direction of the Assistant Special Agent in Charge of the Seattle Office of the FBI, Burt Carter. And they were part of a program of criminal acts carried out by the Nixon White House to be able to gain support for the war in Vietnam, which was losing popularity. On June 20, 1972, President Nixon took a telephone call from his chief of staff, H.R. Haldeman. The 18 and a half minute telephone call was about Guy Goodwin's recapitulation of my testimony to a federal grand jury in Seattle that day. Guy Goodwin, the U.S. Justice Department's chief criminal prosecutor of its internal security division, sat through every second of my hours of grand jury testimony on June 20, 1972. Guy Goodwin declined to speak with me or ask me a single question about my career as a clandestine agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation during my appearance before the Seattle Federal Grand Jury. Guy Goodwin sat stoically in the grand jury room for hours as I, in narrative fashion, in great detail, recounted my background, recruitment by FBI Special Agents Lewis M. Harris Jr. and Burt Carter and my working for the FBI as an undercover terrorist while acting as an anti-Vietnam War activist and pro-civil rights activist. Guy Goodwin's actual assignment on June 20, 1972 was to further obstruct justice on behalf of Nixon, Haldeman, former Attorney General of the United States, John N. Mitchell, J. Edgar Hoover, W. Mark Feltz, known now as Deep Throat, E. Howard Hunt, FBI agents Burt Carter, Stephen Travis, etc., etc. Rosemary Woods, in 1973, in November, testified in court that she had accidentally erased that 18 and a half minutes of conversation between Nixon and Haldeman. Miss Woods had earlier acted out her contortionist explanation of her subsequent perjury. 
That was recorded by Associated Press, if I recall correctly, from those days. Guy Goodwin never faced justice for his obstruction of justice involving the Watergate burglaries, bombings, murders of American citizens by the FBI, etc. Finally, why did the number two man in the FBI, W. Mark Felt, also known as Deep Throat, assist Woodward and Bernstein in their exposing of the Watergate burglaries? Very simple. By exposing the Watergate burglaries, W. Mark Felt took the heat off himself as number two man in the FBI under J. Edgar Hoover for carrying out at Hoover's request and a request of the Nixon administration top leadership including Richard Milhouse Nixon of a program to absolutely convince the American public that the war in Vietnam was necessary and a righteous war by smearing any anti-Vietnam War protesters. It was also to promote Nixon's racist agenda, which was necessary to do that. If you're going to make righteous wars against people who have no reason to be at war with us, what you have to do is smear the progressive movement. You have to smear Democrats. You have to smear people who are fighting racism, fighting injustice around the world. It's all part of the pattern. You ever ask yourself, why didn't Bill Ayers, Bernadette Dorn ever get prosecuted by the federal government for building bombs? And in the case of, w, in the case of Bill Ayers, actually setting bombs and writing about it in public. Why weren't they brought before a grand jury? Why weren't they brought before a trier? In fact, it's very simple. If that had happened, my involvement with the FBI in a campaign of, of murder and bombings in the United States would have been revealed to the entire American public. Any such cases would have been thrown out of court. As Bernadette Dorn, and Bill Ayers would have been able to bring forward to their prosecutions defense witnesses outlining the FBI's and the federal government's absolutely criminal attacks and assaults on our Constitution. That's why Bill Ayers is a free man. That's why Bernadette Dorn is a free woman. That's why they're together to pal around as put by the right wing nut squad with the President of our United States. It's because right-wing nuts, starting in the White House's Oval Office, and their companions in the Federal Bureau of Investigation and other federal agencies, wantonly committed an incredible series of criminal acts in the United States to smear anybody who was in favor of civil rights or against the war in Vietnam. You have to pick both targets because they're Democrats, they're progressives. And now, as a result of that failure to prosecute, that failure to investigate, we in the United States are stuck with people who commit at least sedition and sometimes treason on a daily basis on our televisions and on our radios. The likes of the drugster, the likes of some of our more amazing people like Sean Hannity, who is a propagandist on behalf of the radical right, who surpasses Goering's work for the Nazi empire. And along with that, we have guys like Glenn Beck, who commits sedition on a daily basis as his program, every day on radio and on our television. And of course, the drugster. All these people actively want to destroy the economy. They want to destroy 
the government because it's headed by a black man and because it's headed by people who are not as racist and rabidly so as they are. That's the problem with not prosecuting old crimes. I thank you.